Fantastic. Are you guys ready to kick this thing off? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I, my name is Chris Mohan. I'm going to be your MC for the evening. Uh, I am a, I'm a foreign gentleman. I'm originally from India. I've been here for 16 years. Uh, and the first thing I had to go through when I first came to this country was immigration, which is the most horrifying place an eight-year-old could be. Like, that guy probably works in immigration. He was like, I saw you, buddy. I saw you. <laughs> you look familiar. I knew it. I knew it. The worst thing I had to go through, like, there's, it's just terrifying. There's two dudes who have for, pretending, like, to be good cop and bad cop, and they're both like, let's just both be bad cops and ruin foreigners' dreams. They high five in front of which is weird, right? They're barking questions at you. Business or pleasure? What's the American flag look like? I don't know, the cover up die hard. <laughs> I just want to go home and see my mom and play with my G.I. Joe's. He's got G.I. Joe's, take him, cut him in half, take the head. This dude took the head of my favorite G.I. Joe, you guys. Wears it around his neck like a trophy. Every time I go through the airport, he flashes it out. It's terrifying. That's not how I want to start a vacation, crying in road G7 next to grandma. I don't even know grandma, but I'm crying on her shoulder now. She doesn't have anything to help me out. She just has hard candies and racial slurs. And most of the time, guys, those aren't helpful at all. I like coming here. I came here on 4th of July weekend. That was the first weekend that I came here, uh, which is awesome because uh, you guys, Americans, really know how to celebrate your freedom. Right? Because there's, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things you do. You guys have like a barbecue and fireworks and people blaming me for shit I didn't do. It's awesome. <laughs> Super funsies. I'm Indian. I didn't know what to do. Like, my people had no idea what to do with our freedom. The British left and we were like, hooray, they're gone. I guess we would go attack Pakistan. And that's basically how we did that. I like coming here. Uh, that was It was a fun trip regardless of the terrifying experiences. Uh, I always like taking fun trips. In India, I used to love going to my grandmother's house because I was like taking two trains, right? And that's like taking one train and then like another train because that's how math works, miss. That's how that works, All right? So before the age of eight, I'd only been on one plane ride before, and that was only for like an hour and a half. So in the summer of 1997, when my mom was like, we're going to America, I was like, well, that's gotta be like an hour and a half too. That's not gonna be that long of a plane ride. What my mom failed to mention uh, was that we were moving here forever, and that we would have to go to like several different airports. So this is something she glossed over. But I was super excited. I was eight years old. I wore these tiny blue shorts. Uh, and I wore a Batman t-shirt with a Batman hat, because that's how you wear Batman attire, right? And then I had a, had a, a fanny pack, which some of you were judging me. Don't. I was eight years old. I didn't dress myself, and my mom told me it was a utility belt, so why the hell wouldn't I wear it? I was like, I can't wait to find my batarangs. Just turned out to be my inhaler. That was disappointing. So our flight path was uh, Bombay to London, and then London into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I moved. And when we landed in London, I'd never been to this airport. I'm like taken back by everything. I'm like, oh my God, there's like a candy store over here, and like a toy store over there. America is incredible. So my mom yanked me by the fanny pack because I'm dawdling around, and I look at my mom, and I'm like, Mom, America is the greatest country in the world. And my mom gives me this look. Like, why are you so dumb? Why is this happening right now? I hope when you grow up, you turn out to be pretty because this whole intelligence thing isn't really gonna work out. Guys, it's fine. I turn out to be a very beautiful, beautiful gentleman standing in front of you right now. What's up, ladies? Maybe some of the fellas. Thank you for an actual woman to say woo. That's never happened. Usually, it's like a weird, burly guy. It's like, yeah, I like that. Scares me. I run off stage crying. That's usually what happens there. So we finally landed in Pittsburgh, and I was very excited. I was like, I can't wait to see my mansion, because everybody in America has a mansion. Right, so when my dad rolled up in a 1995 Nissan Altima, I was like, are we driving like our butler's car today? What's happening? And I saw my dad come out of the car, and I was like, well, let me see my butler's on vacation. I'll bond with him later. We'll have fun, Richie Rich type of adventures. It'll be exactly like Richie Rich, except brown. Like, that's what it'll be. But I was like surprised, like every big house we passed we weren't going into, it was like, why aren't we going to that big one? Oh, probably because we're going to that even bigger one. No, what about this one with the plus sign on it, Dad? Let's go in there, there's bingo in there. Let's start this off with some cash. 
So we rolled up into our apartment and I walk into this unfurnished apartment because my dad hasn't figured out what a goddamn Ikea is yet. I look in there and I'm just like, what, what the hell is happening? Is there a beach, dad? I've heard of beachfront property. Is there a beach? And he goes, no. And I was like, where is this? And he goes, it's Pittsburgh. And I was like, what the hell is it Pittsburgh? So I'm like, my mom sees I'm freaking out. So she's like, let's go look at your room, which is also unfurnished because my dad still hasn't figured out what a goddamn Ikea is yet. And I walk up to the window and I look outside and I see all these kids playing with all these awesome toys. And then I saw white women and I turned around to my mom and I was like, we can make this work. And I high five my mom for no reason. It's great. I do like white women. I'm a big fan. I am single. What's up? What is up? I like being single. Being single for me is kind of weird, though, because my friends will try to set me up on dates. They'll be like, Chris, we got this really nice brown girl you should date. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do we have to bring race into this? I already told you what I like, and it's white women. So why would I ever change? Why would I ever change, right? I have no issues with dating brown women. I don't. But brown girls have way crazier problems than white girls do, right? Like these white ladies up front, they're ruined by romantic comedies. Like they expect me to hold a boombox over my head and sing whatever the hell John Cusack was singing in that movie. But I'm not gonna do that because boomboxers are super heavy and I have brittle shoulders. So I'm not gonna be doing any of that. Besides, I don't even know you yet. Maybe they should buy me a drink. We'll get to the boombox portion of our relationship. Then again, I'm probably, thank you, sir. Thank you for making that happen. Then again, I don't mess with outdated technology, so I just have an iPhone over my head, right? But that's not gonna have the same effect. So now I'm gonna have to get some gasoline, burn my name into your lawn, right? And your dad's gonna be like, he's trouble. I don't want him, want you to be seeing this guy anymore. And you're gonna be like, I love him. He's the greatest thing that's ever happened. I'm sorry, I'm pitching a movie to you guys. I'm pitching a blockbuster romantic comedy. It's coming out June 2015. Watch out for that. But brown girl problems like even crazier than that. Brown girl problems like, oh my god, I gotta pick with this really attractive, semi-successful guy that my family loves between this other really attractive, semi-successful guy that my family loves. Let's dance about it. And I can't do that. That's crazy. To choreograph a whole dance with a bunch of strangers? That's insane. If I started dancing up here right now, not one of you assholes would join with me. Not one. <laughs> know how to be single. That's my problem. I'm just like way too awkward to be single. Like I'm the dude that just shows up to party. I'm like, hey, what's up? What's going on? This is how I stand when I enter a party situation, guys. All right. This is a very assertive pose. I want the dude that's been on my side this entire time to learn it. Absorb it, sir. Get into it. This is what's going to get you more women that you know what to do with right now. Look at this. My knees are bent, core engaged. I'm making eye contact with you whether you want it or not. It's power stakes. This is my gift to you. If you take anything out of this show, I want you to look hard. Look in my eyes. Look deep into my eyes. Let's make a connection because that's what the name of the club is. Boom. Done. I just say random things to women. Like a girl could be talking about her dead grandfather and I'll be like, elderly people always dying, am I right? You wanna go on a date, that's what we wanna do. Maybe we'll go on a date, we'll get lock eyes, have our first kiss, fall deeply in love, get married, move to a nice two bedroom house with a white picket fence. You want a minivan, I can get you a minivan. You seem like a girl that likes a minivan. You want a minivan, I can get you a minivan. Oh, I'm coming off creepy. Well, you seem like a bitch anyway. And I think that girl wants to sleep with you forever. That's who this guy is. I'm, uh, I'm 25, I'm 25 years old, and I'm pretty sure my parents want me to get married, and they're Indian, so this would be like an arranged marriage, which makes dating for me way more complicated than it needs to be, because every girl that I bring home to meet them, they still put up, bring out photos of every other suitor they have, right? Like, no, no, you're nice, but what about Gita? And I'm like, what are you doing, we're at brunch. We are at brunch, they're bringing the cantaloupe right now, you're picking up the check, don't be a bunch of dicks. Don't be a bunch of dicks. Right? Like, my parents are examples of arranged marriage for me. And like, every time I go home to see them, they're sitting on opposite ends of the couches. They're not making eye contact with each other. They're watching CSI, the reruns. They pretty much look like two college students who accidentally saw each other's dicks. Like, that's what... <laughs> I'm gonna deal with my parents. I was like, look, let's start small. Maybe you can arrange me some one-night stands. <laughs> we'll move to like 
the wedding portion of this. That's like a horrifying thought. Like, he immediately regretted that. Because if my dad actually follows through, what is he going to do? Show up in my apartment and be like, son, I found a very loose girl at the club. I don't even know her name. She asked me for something called Rooflet. I think that's an ibuprofen drug. I gave her my excedrin. She's pop locking and dropping in the living room right now. Do you want me to get us started? I heard about tweaking, twerking, something on the news. Do you want me to? No, like, get the hell out of my. Who let you in here? How did you? Did that Deborah? Did Deborah let you in here? God damn, Deborah. The only logical step to this, guys, is arranged divorces. Right? My dad's gonna be like, son, I don't think this wedding is working out. We found you a new wife. This is wife version 2.0. <laughs> we'll control R, delete this wedding, and reboot on safe mode. <laughs> I dated a Jewish girl because I really wanted to make my parents proud. Uh, do we have any Jews here? Jewish people? Jewish people? Yeah. Good. One Jew. <laughs> one really aggressive Jewish guy. Right in the back of the room. That's awesome. I, I learned a lot from that relationship, man. I learned a lot about the Jewish culture. I learned that they have a lot of prayers for things, right? And I'm a Hindu guy, so I have a lot of gods. And I was like, let's formulate a trade, right? I could use some prayers in my life. But let's be honest, they could probably use some gods in theirs, right? Because you don't want to bank all your chips into one god. You want to diversify that deity portfolio a little bit. Any economist is going to tell you that. I was, I'm a loving man, let's do this all across the board. You know, the Catholics and the Muslims could trade. Get some virgins for some little boys. We could do that, that'd be fun. That's nice. The Buddhists and the atheists could trade, right? The Buddhists could get some food from the atheists, and the atheists could learn how to shut the hell up for 10 minutes. That'd be fun. While well, I was dating this Jewish girl, we had to attend a Catholic wedding, and I know what you're thinking, an Indian guy and a Jewish girl entering a church, not only is that set up to a terrible joke, how did you guys not just immediately burn in hell? I don't know, I have no idea, but it kind of felt like we were already there, because that service was like 19 and a half hours long. I mean, it's like sit down, stand up, kneel, sit back down, stand up. It's like, Padre, a lot of leg work happening, gonna do some push-ups in the aisle. And I did, I popped off like 35 before the bride came down. She's like, you're ruining my day, you're ruining my day. And I was like, look, I got you a toaster, all right? <laughs> Black & Decker, $34.99. I didn't even use a coupon. I'll take it back. You will have soggy toast till dead to you part. <laughs> We had to get up to get uh, communion, and I know as a heathen I'm not supposed to, so the dude, which is how casual I am with the priest, I call him the dude. He said, uh, if you don't feel comfortable getting communion, just put your arm across your shoulder, and we won't give you any. So I did that, and he looked me right in the eyes, right in the eyes, and he goes, may the light of Christ find you. And I was like, what the hell did you just say? To my face, is that this? To my face, what the dare you? I was like, you know what, if Jesus wants to find the light in me, maybe he should, you know, try to recruit me on his team a little bit. Maybe do a sales pitch a little bit. Because the army will go to any podunk high school, college, county fair, set up a table with like a PowerPoint presentation and some merch, really convince you why they're better than every other branch of the military, right? So if Jesus wants to convince me of how good Catholicism is, maybe he should set up a table with some PowerPoint presentations and a merch and really sell me on Catholicism. Like look at me and go, Chris, if you join the Catholics, We'll go ahead and take care of your student loans for you. We'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> Start you off with a nice 401k. You like beach volleyball, Chris? We got beach volleyball every Tuesday, all right? I know the Hindus have said you get to come back to something cool, but how about we just spend eternity in paradise with my bad dad? Doesn't that sound good? You know, like for only $15.99 a month, you get to spend eternity. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. $15.99 a month? Isn't that a little steep, Jesus? Right? The Jews are saying 10.99, and I get a really cool hat with that. <laughs> the Hindus are saying 8.99, and the Muslims are just giving that shit away. I think I have to wear like a turban at an airport twice a month. I think I'm cool with that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I really like you Catholics, though. You guys fascinate me. I do like you guys. The one thing I don't understand about you guys is the idea of the white Jesus. Because Jesus was technically from the Middle East, so he'd be my color, would totally get flagged at an airport today. <laughs> He'd be like, I don't care who your dad is, if he took off the Roman sandals. <laughs> Carpenter, it's a work ethic of a Mexican right there. Preached about love and acceptance like MLK Jr. What the hell makes him so white? I feel like when you reach that level of fame, your artist rendition automatically turns into a white dude. So whenever I reach that level of fame, 
my artist rendition is just gonna be Harry Potter and McLovin. <laughs> you guys have been absolutely fantastic. My name is Chris Mohan. Thank you so much.